And then by then you're pretty beat up because you're trying to keep the numbers good in the lifts, but you're also increasing the volume. So you accumulate a lot of stress. Fatigue is pretty high. So the only way really to kind of combat that is time off. And you feel good for it and come back fresh up. It's definitely an approach that I think is worth trying if you haven't tried it. Morning, 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 guys and girls of the AMA channel. And it's around 6.15 p.m. for me. I've had a good day of training, good day of eating. Settled for the evening now, and I'm gonna run through this week's questions. I have seven here. I'll try and answer all seven, and I'll just be as honest as I can, as always. Hopefully some of this is helpful, some of it may not be. Uh, but I'll always be very honest and truthful. No point me bullshitting or beating around the bush. If there's something I do, then I'll say it. If there's something I don't do, then I'll say it. Question number one today, do you do stomach vacuums? Why or why not? I've tried, and I, this may be an excuse, I don't know, I've tried many, many times to do stomach vacuums. And for the life of me, I seem to not be able to actually do a vacuum. A vacuum isn't you just like pulling in your stomach, trying to hold your belly button on your spine. It's a lot deeper than that. It's you being able to get the air out and then your stomach actually does create an actual vacuum and your stomach area pulls in. I don't know if my organs are too big. <laughs> I think all the years of compounding food and obviously taking certain anabolics and fucking growth hormone and stuff that I just, I'm incapable of doing it. Maybe I'm just a, a soft bitch and I haven't tried hard enough or I just don't know what I'm doing. I've got friends that have managed to do one prep for a show and be able to do it. Would I suggest doing it for sure? Absolutely, if it can help you control your midsection, then it's worth doing. Not even to the point where I think a vacuum is good looking on most bodybuilders, I think it looks shit on a lot of people. If it helps you with a real good connection to your midsection and think of all the help it's gonna have in those quarter turns and even your regular poses. Stomach control is something that a lot of us lack, myself included. There's been times where I've been much more regimented on trying to focus on stomach control and it has paid off. So from my own first-hand experience, it's definitely worth at least trying it because it will contribute towards a better controlled midsection regardless. And that ultimately will help you in your bodybuilding. Question two, do you do any other direct ab training on or off season? I do. And I get hammered by Milos all the time, who thinks I don't train abs because my abs look a certain way. But it's like, if your calves are this long, you were never gonna make them longer. My abs are superficially very shallow. There's like a hard sinew between them on the surface. You're like, you know the downwards line that people have on their abs? I don't have it, never have. Even if I'm super, super lean. And people seem to think, Milos included. I'm not saying you can't build thicker abs and have good, relatively good abs, but I will say you can only work with what you've got. Um, and this is an excuse because I've been training abs for since I was 14 <laughs> and it's not really improved. Um, I've tried loads of methods for a sustained period of time in order to make sure that I haven't cut that type of training too short. I do exactly what people suggest, which is the you know leg raises and crunches. So working abdominals from kind of a crunch position, but also a leg raise position. And I do that religiously every day that I train every single day. I've done it less frequently to see if that helped. I've done it more frequently to see if that helped. I've got fat friends who have abs, people that can look like they're off season potentially and lift up their t-shirt and there's still some bulge to the abs. It's a very, very genetic component. So don't be too angry at yourself if your abs don't look a certain way. Here's what it is. I will forever be hounded by Milos until the day I die that he thinks I could have better abs. So that question is hilarious because Obviously, Milos is part of this AMA, and he's probably encouraged that question. <laughs> question three. I apologize if this question is too personal, but do you have any suggestions for combination combating low libido, ED? I don't, because I've never really experienced it. I've experienced the, the non-need to bang. Like, I've experienced the not wanting the fuck. That always comes, you know, for me a few weeks out from a show, but it's never totally gone. Like, the minute I do a show and eat some sugar and, and replenish and hydrate, I'm ready to go, so I can't say I've ever really suffered with that. It's not something that's long-term, at least, anyway. You know, I might want a little bit of assistance from a bit of, you know, um, Cialis or something, just to make the old boy a little bit more. You get what I'm saying? But I haven't ever had that personally. But if you do have that, then that's the way you should actually probably speak to someone who understands blood work, so you can have a look at why perhaps that is occurring, because it's all hormonal. Uh, four, how old were you when you started losing your hair? Do you use any products now to maintain your iconic look? Look at that. So the side hair, no top hair. Around 24 years old, I think. I shaved my head for the British Championships in 2014 because I thought, you know what, I want to look a certain way. 
my ball geezer. And then when that show was done, it grew back. It grew back pretty well because for 2015, I had hair. But it wasn't the same. It was definitely thinner. And then I suppose around 2016, 17, and there, you know, there beyond, started to get thinner on the top and stay thick at the sides. The hair on the side of my head would just grow more and grow less on top. And there was a time where I introduced finasteride and tried to grow my hair back. And it was a bit of a shabby attempt. I was quite happy with it because it was better than nothing. But, you know, it kind of, to anyone else who was looking from the outside, they'd be like, that's pathetic. But for me, it was a little bit of a victory. So I did decide to shave it off in the end because people thought I was a joke. <sighs> is it worth getting a hair transplant? I don't think so. I think if I was to go and get this done, I think it would just die again. There's obviously a reason the hair there isn't alive. <laughs> it's to do with, you know, circulation, blood flow, whatever's being fed to that. How much DHT am I producing? Do you convert testosterone into more DHT than others? It's all that. It's all that. Again, genetic, like the abdominal thing. A lot of things are genetic. You can only do so much within your genetic uh, you know, um, expression. And that is, unfortunately, another thing I've had to face. Um, I will say this, that I think you take after your mother's side. Um, so my mother's father, my granddad, was bald as a coot at the age of 20. He had like one strand of hair going over his head. So he looked basically like Homer Simpson from that age. And I've been destined to, you know, look a certain way as well. Homer Simpson-esque. Does it matter? Yeah, it kind of matters to me. Sometimes I wish I had hair. I do prefer how I looked with hair. I feel like I'm a bit inadequate in a room with people who have nice hair. Um, I feel like the females probably look at you like you're older than you are because you don't have hair. But, you know, in reality, it's just unfortunately something that happens to some of us. People probably don't judge us so much on it, but I'm someone that probably overlooks things and thinks maybe they do. That's why I wear hats sometimes. So yeah, my own experience of losing hair happened from around 24 because I shaved it and obviously all the anabolics and training and whatnot sped up a process that was inevitable for my genetic types anyway. I've got friends with all their hair left, you know, look at Jordan Peters, you look at my training partner, Nathaniel, uh, my other friend, Louis, like they all have their hair still and they have an abundance of it. And we've all done the same thing, same drugs, same training, same nutrition. Uh, it's just unfortunate that sometimes you're the person who has the side effects. Psh, I wish it was different. Five, have there been any updates on your In The Works podcast? Very excited to follow on what channel we're posted on, JP's. Uh, so me and Jordan will be doing podcasts together. I don't know what he wants to do in the long run. I know it's his platform, ultimately, because it's going to be at his facility. When I say his facility, he has a standalone place, which isn't at the gym that we're building. If he wants me to be like a part of it, which is down to be discussed, then of course I will. I, I don't want to assume anything, so I don't want to assume that I am co-host on there or anything, because he might not have that in mind. Uh, but obviously, if it is that, then I would be happy to be there because me and Jordan, you know, one, we're great friends, two, we share a lot of passion, but three, we also like to search and delve into things that aren't to do with what we already currently do. We're very interested on having knowledge and understanding of things outside of this and trying to evolve ourselves as people and learn more about the rest of the world and how to be better people. So there's no real place better to do that than a podcast. I feel a bit limited by some podcasts where I'm on it and it's all bodybuilding and people don't really know how to go beyond that. I, I like John because he's quite deep. I feel like I get suffocated sometimes with the lack of wanting to diversify our speech because that's just the way I am. You know, it's not for everybody. I understand that. Some people think I waffle too much and I go around the bush and I do. I know that. But it's just because I have a level of intrigue and I want to understand things. So, you know, I'd rather be able to get on a podcast with a friend and talk about fucking space than talking about how much chicken breast is required to grow. Um, that's just me. So hopefully me and Jordan, hopefully Jordan wants me on there and then we do that and just explore other avenues, maybe get some guests on and just really open up those conversations that should be had because I want to be a better person. And I know Jordan does and we want to be on more wholesome people. You know, we want to be able to be able to get to the end of our lives and say, well, you know what? Spent a lot of it learning and understanding and becoming. And I think that's a really important thing. I don't want to be too isolated by my history as a bodybuilder because it can obviously limit the potential for you to understand other things. I'm a useless guy, I tell you. Like, if you told me to change the screen watch in my car right now, I wouldn't know how to do it. And I hate that about me. Podcasts and opportunities to talk to people and learn are a really, really major thing in my own development. So with that being said, uh, I definitely look forward to being on there if that's the case. Question number six today, do you ever deload? And if so, what's your version of time off? I deload currently on the training that I've been doing with Nathaniel every sort of sixth to seventh week. We complete a block of training, six or seven weeks or whatever it is, depends. And then we take an entire week off the gym. It's no deload as such, it's a rest. 
The train that we do in a minute has these mezzo cycles where you obviously, in, not obviously, because you might not know, but a certain amount of volume start on week one and it can be increased over the, the weeks. And you're heating the maximum amount of volume on, say, week five or six or whatever. And then by then you're pretty beat up because you're trying to keep the numbers good in the lifts, but you're also increasing the volume. So you get pretty bad. So you accumulate a lot of stress. Fatigue is pretty high. So the only way really to kind of combat that is time off. Uh, and you feel good for it. You come back fresher. Uh, you feel like you want the time off because you've been training really hard to get to that point and you feel pretty smashed. So um, it's definitely worth trying if you haven't tried it. Work your ass off basically to, you know, week six and then week seven, just have a complete break. Keep on diet, no breaks from the diet. Keep your good food in, keep moving. Keep, you know, your steps if you do steps or your cardio in place, but just rest from the weight training for a week and then go back in. So that's my approach. And that's been adopted from him. Beforehand, I used to just take days off when I needed them. I still take two days off a week, you know, on a Thursday and a Sunday, and I think that's absolutely necessary. For you, it might be different, but I would certainly say that it's worth considering doing it because it's been it's been very uh, helpful. Right, final question for today. From an unenhanced point of view, how many sets do you think a muscle needs to grow before diminishing returns or risk of injury? If you can really, like, tap into reach an actual failure with one set. But I know the majority of us don't have that ability, so we have to accumulate that stress through multiple sets. If you're really, really able to take yourself to a point where you're on a hack squat and you can't even get out of the hole because your quads are dead, then I wouldn't see the point of doing a second set. I really wouldn't. Then within the leg session, how many exercises should you do? If you're able to get that point less, you know, hack squat because it's quad dominant, and then maybe, uh, you know, a hamstring movement where you go to exactly the same point of failure. Um, and then a calf movement, you know, you could do free exercises where you just absolutely blitz them and get a lot out of it. I don't think you have to do multiple sets to actually get a response. The only downside to that is that it does mean that your calorific expenditure isn't as high, so therefore your nutrition has to cater to that. If you have less volume in your training, then ultimately you eat less. Because even three sets not, not to failure are still more workload than one set to failure whether people like to admit it or not. 100 kilograms for, you know, three sets of 10, that's 30 reps of 100 kilograms versus one set of 150 for 10. Then you've done more in those multiple sets. So it just depends on the approach. Find your balance with how much work you want to do. Some people like being in the gym and want to spend a bit of time. So it sounds weird, but like maybe you should have some rest, you know, some reserve reps. If you really wish to be in the gym for, you know, an hour or two hours of your day because you love it, then you have to consider your time spent in there has to be spent wisely. And if you're doing like failure on the first set of each thing and you're done in 20 minutes, then you're done in 20 minutes. But if you have like a reserve rep or two, then you can accumulate more volume. Still really, really train hard and still grow because you absolutely can. But just understand that you need to choose what you wish to do. Because once you've destroyed a muscle, once you've really taken that shit there, I find it counterproductive afterwards because you're only going to be able to lift less weight. And if you're lifting less weight, Less weight, less stress. You've done the optimal amount. And anything else is just junk, as they say. You know, it's just extra additional fluff that really isn't required in order to progress. Because bodybuilding, you can't be emotionally attached to it. Like, oh yeah, you know what? I love training. I'm going to do this many sets and reps because that's what I like. You can. Obviously, if you're trying to like prioritize development and actual response, then you've got to kind of let go of a little bit of that emotional connection and just do on do not on paper, but do in practicality what is actually the most beneficial. And for many people, it will be just, you know, one set of this, that, and that, and that. Um, you know, if you get to a point where you're very experienced in the gym and able to find those sets, then you'll end up being like Dorian. You'll end up being in the gym for 45 minutes maximum, which is crazy because most of us feel like we haven't even just started the workout within 45 minutes. But it just shows the level of um, focus, connection, integrity, and intensity that he was able to apply due to the years of experience. Not enhanced in your recovery capabilities, obviously a bit less than someone that's on anabolics. I still think you can train just as hard. I just think you have to consider that you're probably gonna have to really, really monitor your rest and your nutrition to combat that fact. Again, like I say, what I say on this channel through my own experience, not through, I'm not the Bible of bodybuilding. There's better bodybuilders than me. But then at the same time, I've come from a background where I don't think genetically I'm one of the best but I've managed to get to, say, the Olympia stage on multiple occasions through figuring shit out. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm here, to help you guys figure shit out. I don't expect all of you to be genetic phenomenons. So that's why I'm here, to support you and to say, don't give up, you can do well, you can do really well if you are able to apply yourself. So, yeah, so hopefully those questions kind of made sense. Hopefully I answered them well enough. Um, I enjoy doing this, so, you know, this is a once-weekly thing. Get them over, IFBB AMA. 
make sure you do follow us uh, on the YouTube and then check us out on the site. You know, it's really important to us that we get those subs, you know, likes, comments below if you enjoy this content. And just let us know. The more you enjoy, the more you support, then the more we do and the better quality is. Obviously, these videos are just kind of vlog style sitting down at home. But we got, you know, this is a lot of videos with the boys. There's the podcasts that we have to the boys. And then obviously just me jibber jabbing, jibber jabber about these questions here on the AMA. So that's it from me. I'm going to have a relaxed evening because I am battered from training today. And uh, I wish you all all the best. Enjoy the rest of your week. Peace out.